that many of us need further clarification on these types of problems. So what my goal in this video is to do is to essentially give us a better understanding of these types of problems because as we have figured out by this point they're going to be uh, occurring quite frequently <coughs> in chemistry and physics and subjects like that. So we're given a problem that states find the energy of a photon whose frequency is 5 times 10 to the power of 12 meters. So right off the bat we know that whenever we're talking about energy we're going to use the equation E equals HV, where E is the energy in joules, H is Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, and this thing V will represent the wavelength. Well, we only have one problem here, and that's because the piece of information that we're giving, aside from these constants, is in terms of frequency, when really we need it in terms of wavelength. So what we could do is we could recognize that, okay, V is going to be the same thing as c, which is the speed of light, over this funny little Greek character, we could just call it y, and that's going to essentially represent the frequency. That's very convenient for us, because if we could just plug this in for this value of v, we would have e equals h times c over, again, we could just call it y, and then we could plug in the frequency that we're given here for this value of y, so let's do that now. We want to solve for energy, so we've already got this on one side, so that's good. H, as we just talked about, is Planck's constant. That's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the eighth meters. And this is already very convenient because we have frequency in terms of meters and we have the speed of light in terms of meters per second squared, or I'm sorry, just meters per second. And now we could divide off by Y, which is 5 times... 10 to the 12th meters. Uh, the meters here are going to cancel. We have uh, 1 over seconds now, or hertz, and we also have a second being multiplied by the joules in Planck's constant. So we can see that the seconds will also cancel. And this is good because now we're going to have whatever result we have, we're going to have some numerical value in terms of the unit joules, which is exactly what we want. Whenever we're talking about energy, we're always going to be talking about it in terms of joules. So right off the bat, we could just bring this down here, not changing anything there yet. Here we can simplify this a little bit. 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6. Subtract the exponents, 10 to the negative fourth. This is the same thing as 6. We made this larger, so now we have to make this smaller times 10 to the negative fifth. And now we just bring down what we have here, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules. We multiply this out. Now we can see, if I just get out my calculator here, that we have 6.626 times 6. It's going to be equal to 39.756. 39.756. Now we have uh, exponents that are in terms of powers of 10, so now we know that when we're multiplying these two expressions, we could just simply just add the exponents. Uh, negative 34 plus negative 5 is going to be 10 to the negative 39th. However, we want this always in scientific notation, so we're going to jump the decimal point 1 here, thus dividing by 10. Since we divided by 10 here, we have to multiply this by 10. If we multiply this by 10, we're simply just going to increase this exponent by 1. So negative 39 plus 1 becomes times 10 to the negative 38th. And again, since we have the unit joules here, we're going to represent this in terms of joules. And now we have it. The energy of this photon of light is going to equal 3.9756 times 10 to the negative 38 joules.